English as a second language, the students are pulled out of the regular classroom given 15 to half an hour, 45 minutes of instruction in English. They are losing out of their course content, not gaining anything in English. And so uh, we think that those are wrong. If you had a bilingual teacher, credentialed bilingual education teacher, she could present that coursework in both English and in Spanish. Is that practical? Uh, first of all, that's untrue. We do not pull out our students. They are in ESL they're in English classes to teach uh, to learn English. We mainstream into mathematics, world history, U.S. history, government. I have students in pre-calculus taught by a teacher who speaks in English and those students learn pre-calculus. So we do not pull them out for 15 to 20 minutes and they lose ground in their academics. We push them, we mainstream them. I just want to clear up one thing. Bilingual education does not equate to bilingualism. Just because you're in a bilingual program does not mean that you're going to become out bilingual. In fact, that's the whole irony behind bilingual programs. That does not mean that you will be bilingual. Why does this discussion about how to educate kids end up turning on a racial component? This becomes a very inflammatory issue. It did in California. It continues. And, and I'm all for bilingual, obviously. I'm a Hispanic. Uh, my parents spoke Spanish. Uh, we were spoken Spanish in the home. We went to schools and spoke English. I took Spanish classes in high school and college. Uh, I, I have nothing against being Hispanic or wanting to speak Spanish. And that's not, it shouldn't become a racial thing. It Why should, does it? It becomes a racial thing because the uh, people equate, if you're anti-bilingual, you're anti-Hispanic, you're anti-the language. It has nothing to do because those students do not come out speaking both languages anyway. What I'm against is that our kids are being held behind year after year. Yes, there is a high dropout rate among minorities, mainly Hispanics. Bilingual programs will not be the silver bullet to that. There's other reasons for that, and I think it's because we have not ratcheted up the curriculum. We have not made students accountable. For the learning and as soon as we do that i think we're going to start seeing a change well with the aims right. test with we're going to make test, uh, students accountable no question about that senator lopez I can, I can why die. is it racial why I, does this become a racial question uh, i i uh, well it's not the proponents of bilingual education that is making it a racial issue i can take you to uh to a school one mile from here where kindergarten students and first grade students are taught are already bilingual and by the sixth grade those students will not only be bilingual but they will be biliterate the idea is not to get rid of those programs, but to replicate them to a greater extent. It means increasing the number of teachers that we have in our school districts that are credentialed, qualified to teach uh, these subjects. It, it means uh, having uh, a lot more oversight about what is happening out in our school districts. It means presenting the parents with uh, some rights so that they can demand that the school districts are presenting programs that will work for them. You're really a complete opposite ends of the spectrum here. You're saying the program can be saved and implemented if improved you're saying you just don't buy that it works period I, ha I have not seen any evidence that it has and I have been a practitioner in the classroom I have eight years of my own experience plus I am a principal of a high school where I see students learning and doing well in my high school every single day and I can only speak from what I live and what I believe to see each and every day on now, my campus. Now when you talk about this in these very frank terms do Hispanics come up to you and say, what in the world are you trying to do here? No, because all of my Hispanic students know and their parents, they're here to learn English. We give them the support. It's not that we offer an uncomforting or uncaring environment in the classroom. If they need a translation, if they don't understand a concept, it doesn't mean we never speak in their native language. If we can, we do so. <clears throat> Uh, but would they that know. maintain under, that under this proposal? Yes, it would maintain. It's not that we never speak in their language, but just only for translation. But we're there to teach them English and to, so that they can learn it quickly. We have before and after school that they can come for assistance. We have uh, teachers that spend many times uh, with them after school. We integrate them into our sports programs. They're punters and the football team, they're our soccer players, they're playing softball, they're into a lot of the extracurricular activities where they're assimilating into this, uh, this country and they're learning English at a great rate. And, and to me, I think it is racist in nature 
to keep these kids behind so that they're going to be relegated to low-level paying jobs when they gra if they ever do graduate. And that's why I and am fighting so hard. And you suggest this is almost segregation. Yes, it will become a segregated uh, system. If we continue with bilingual programs, uh, we need to integrate the Hispanic students into the mainstream so that they can be AP scholars, so they can be National Merit scholars. Senator Lopez, before the break, I want to ask you, uh, in this country, it, this is a country built on, on immigrants. People uh, have, through the years in this country, through the 250 years of our nation, uh, almost, uh, assimilated, learned the language. What is different now? What has changed? Uh, there is nothing uh, different, in fact, uh, that assimilation process uh, over the past uh, probably two decades has increased. Uh, children and, and parents are learning English uh, much faster, uh, taking uh, to the American culture uh, much faster. If anything has kept them from engaging in the American way, it is our public school systems that have failed these students and have not found a way to really bring them into the mainstream. I indicated to you a while ago that 50 to 60 percent of Me Mexican American students that enter kindergarten never complete high school. Listening to the proponents of this initiative process, you'd think that everything was okay. It is not. And that is the reason why we have to reform bilingual education, which the science is indisputable. Whenever it is properly implemented, it does work there is sufficient data to indicate that and, and uh, I don't know why anybody would, would doubt it. Bilingual education, we'll, we will come up with some final thoughts from our guests on Face the State right after this. Should it stay or go in Arizona? State Senator uh, Joe Eddie Lopez, should I think, it stay? I think it should stay. I think the science reflects that properly implemented bilingual programs will work. That is the reason I have introduced a piece of legislation that will reform bilingual education. Margaret Garcia Dugan, Principal Glendale High School, has it uh, is his, has its time come and gone in your view? I think it's uh, gone. It, I think the time is that we need to get rid of it. I think we've had 30 years of research. Obviously, it hasn't proven to be the program that it was intended to be. I think uh, let's put it to a vote. Let's let the parents decide. I think most surveys state the parents want their children to learn English. And in fact, if enough signatures end up. Uh, uh, the, through the initiative process, about 101,000 signatures, you may be voting on this in November of the year 2000 as we head into the, the new millennium. Thanks for being with us on Face of State, and thanks to both of you, Senator Thank Lopez you. Thank you. and uh, Margaret Dugan. That's it, and we'll see you next week on Face of State.